Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on light and color. The topic of this video is pigments and color subtraction. Here's the question we wish to answer. What is a primary pigment and how can it affect the color appearance of an object? Let's get started. Let's start with the question, what is a pigment? A pigment is simply a chemical that is added to a material to affect its color appearance. Pigments are known by a number of names. For instance, they may be called inks or dyes or paints. And while technically an ink, a dye, a paint, and a pigment are not exactly the same thing, they operate in much the same way. They're a chemical imparted to material to affect its color appearance. And they operate on the basis of they subtract specific colors of light from the light that lands on the object. They absorb light. And because they absorb light, they operate under the principles of color subtraction. So we're going to be talking a lot today in this video about pigments and color subtraction. So we've been talking quite a bit about light in these videos. Now we're going to be talking about pigments. And pigments and light are different. They might share some similar names, but they're different. So here's a way to explain it. Screens like this computer screen, a phone screen, a television screen, they use light. Red, green, and blue light with varying intensities lands on the screen and creates an image. The light adds together, follows rules of color addition. Now that's quite different than pigments because pigments are chemicals. It's stuff that printers use. Printers use pigments and they impart the pigment to a white sheet of paper. And when the light lands on the paper, the pigment that is there absorbs, subtracts, or takes away one or more colors of light. And so pigments follow rules of color subtraction because they're absorbing light. So we've been using this little schematic quite a bit in these videos. The schematic works for light, but it also works for pigments. When we use it for pigments, here's how we use it. There are three, you need to know them, primary pigments. They are cyan, magenta, and yellow. You see them in the ovals on the schematic diagram above my head. Now these primary pigments are called primary pigments because they absorb one single primary color of light. Here's how you can find out how it works. Cyan is our first primary pigment. You find it on the color wheel. It's right at the bottom in the oval. It absorbs the color of light that's across from it. Cyan pigments absorb red light. Our next pigment is magenta. You see it on the color wheel. Look right across from it. What does it absorb? Magenta pigments absorb green light whenever green light shines on an object with magenta pigment. And finally, yellow pigments. They absorb whatever's across from them. That's blue light. So there's your three primary pigments. Each one absorbs a single primary color of light. So here's how this idea of color subtraction and pigments work. When you apply a pigment, to an object, a sheet of paper, a shirt, whatever it is, that pigment will absorb a single primary color of light. So let's just say we have a shirt and magenta pigments in the shirt, and we shine white light down on the shirt. White light's red and green and blue light combined. And when it hits that shirt, you remember the color wheel, the magenta will absorb the green light. So if you start with red, green, and blue, and green gets taken away, there's two colors remaining. Red and blue reflect off the shirt to your eye, and your eye and your brain work together to say, hey, that's a magenta shirt. In terms of a color subtraction equation, it would look something like this. You start with red plus green plus blue, but then the shirt takes away the green, so we subtract it. Then do the math. What's left is red plus blue, and that kind of light that's equivalent to magenta. So a primary pigment absorbs a single primary color of light. But what happens if you have two or more pigments imparted to, say, an article of clothing? Well, I'm going to tell you what happens. Notice here we have a football player, and to the left of the football player is a table that lists the primary pigments imparted to four parts of that uniform. We'll start with the helmet. In the helmet, the cyan and magenta pigment. Now, if we look above, we'll notice that the cyan pigment is going to absorb red light, and the magenta pigment is going to absorb the green light. There's only one color of light that did not get absorbed by that helmet, and it's blue light. It gets reflected. Now let's look at the jersey. The jersey has magenta and yellow pigments imparted to it. 
And so the magenta is going to absorb the green. The yellow is going to absorb the blue. There's only one primary color of light not absorbed, and it's red light. It gets reflected to your eye, and that jersey looks red. Now let's look at the pants. The pants have cyan and yellow pigment on it. The cyan pigment absorbs the red light. The yellow pigment absorbs the blue light. You use the color wheel to figure that out. There's only one color of light remaining, and that's green light. And so those pants look green because the other two primary colors of light were absorbed. Now what happens if you apply all three pigments? Each one absorbs a primary color of light. When you're done, there's no light left. Nothing reflects to your eye, and those shoes look black. Black is the absence of colors of light. And so this explains the various rules of color subtraction when you have two or more pigments imparted to an object. So that example with the football uniform had to do with white light shining on the various parts of the uniform. But what happens if it's not white light? What if it's yellow light, magenta light, cyan light? Well, you do the same thing. You have to use the incident absorbed reflected model. And it begins by asking what co primary colors of light are incident on that object? Express it in terms of red, green, and blue. Then you look at the pigment and you use a color wheel to figure out which of the incident colors of light get absorbed. Finally, subtract the absorbed light colors from the incident light colors to see what's remaining. That's the light that gets reflected to your eye and determines the color appearance of that object. So let's use this incident absorbed reflected model and this color schematic to answer this question. It says yellow light shines on a shirt that has cyan pigment in it. What color does the shirt appear? So here's our situation. Yellow light shining on a shirt with cyan pigment. The yellow light is simply red plus green light. So the red plus green light hits the shirt, and it's got cyan pigment, and cyan can absorb red. So the red gets taken away, and the green light gets reflected to my eye. I look at that shirt, and it looks green to me. So if we were to express this with a color equation, we'd put it something like this. We start with the incident light color, R plus G, that's yellow. We subtract the absorbed light color. Cyan absorbs red, so I go minus R. And then I do the math. Red plus green minus red equal green. That shirt appears green. Here's example number two. Yellow light shines on a shirt that has two pigments in it, magenta and yellow pigment. What color does that shirt appear? So here's the situation. We have yellow light, which is simply red plus green light, incident on the shirt. Those are my incident colors. The shirt contains yellow and magenta pigment. Now if we look above, the magenta will take away the green, and green shining on that shirt. So I have to subtract the green because it gets absorbed. Now the yellow would absorb blue, but there's no blue light here. So we don't have to worry about the yellow pigment. The red light's going to get reflected to my eye. When I look at this shirt, it looks red. Here's the color equation. I start with yellow light, that's R plus G. I take away the green light, minus G. I do the math, R plus G minus G equal R. This shirt appears red. So here's our final example. Yellow light shines on a shirt that has cyan and magenta pigments in it. What color does the shirt appear? So my situation is this. I have yellow light. I'm starting with incident light colors of red plus green and it's shining on a shirt with two pigments. The cyan pigment absorbs red light, and the magenta pigment, it absorbs green light. That's the only light that's shining on the shirt. So I start with red plus green, and the red gets absorbed, and the green gets absorbed. There's nothing left. No light can reflect because it all gets absorbed, and this shirt looks black. Here's the color equation. I start with red plus green, and then I subtract red because the cyan pigment's there. And then I subtract green, the work of magenta pigment, and what's left is zero. And this shirt looks black. So in the world of printers and printing and paper-based publishing, the most common model is the CMYK printing process. I just replaced the ink in my color printer the other day, and this is the box. And that's what the side of the box looks like. 
you see it right here. I replaced the ink in my color printer with cyan ink, magenta ink, and yellow ink. These are the primary pigments. Each one of these pigments absorbs a primary color of light. And by using all three, you can take away as you need to create any printed image you wish. The K in this process stands for black, and the black is simply used to give a little deeper contrast to the printed image. Now watch this. I want to use my CMYK printer to create that image. And so I'm going to use three inks. I'm going to use the cyan ink, the magenta ink, and I'm going to use the yellow ink. And I'm going to mix them with various ink intensities to produce that original image. So here's the result of mixing cyan and magenta inks. And you'll notice you get a lot of blues. Now I'm going to take the cyan and the yellow ink and mix those. And wherever they overlap, I end up getting some greens. The green results because the cyan takes away the red and the yellow takes away the blue light. Now I'm going to take the yellow ink and mix it with the magenta ink. And that's where I get a lot of the reds because the yellow ink takes away blue light and the magenta ink takes away the green light. Now I'm going to take all three of these inks and mix them together. And now you'll notice all the colors that I'm getting. The reds, the greens, the blues, the cyans, the magentas, and the yellows. But if I put a final ink on top of all this, the K of CMYK, I end up getting deeper contrast in an image that looks a lot more like that original image. That's how this printer works. Hey, if you found this video to be helpful in any way, perhaps you can help us out by giving us a like or tapping the bell subscribing to our channel or even leaving a question or a comment in the comment section below. We're not done helping you out because in the description section of this video, we have an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. Help yourself. Thanks for watching.